Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Vermont maple is an important part of our agricultural economy as well as an important part of our working landscape. Sugar makers are proud of the quality products they produce and the care they take of the natural environment. Today we begin with a story of one Vermont sugar maker who still does things the old-fashioned way. He believes in sugaring as a family and he's racking up awards for the quality of his syrup. Here's Across the Fences, Keith Silva. Charles Patty, call him Bill, everyone else does, follows a simple philosophy to make maple syrup. Work hard, keep it clean, and enjoy it. Maybe Bill missed his calling as a poet. Ask him about his business, and it turns out he's as wise as he is humble. Well, it's just a family sugar run up, sugaring operation. We uh, tap 2,000 buckets, gather with caboses and set of horses. Other than that, it's kind of like Grandpa did, right? Patty has spent his life farming and sugaring, but it wasn't until he built this sugar house that he and his family decided to go into the maple business for themselves. We built this sugar house in 2001. Prior to that, I sugared pretty much boiled for someone or boiled ourselves way back as a kid with my grandfather and father and pretty much something we've done forever. We didn't have a tractor when I was a kid on the farm, so we did everything with horses. So. Do you miss those days? Mm, don't miss the horses. I like horses though because they buy hay. <laughs> Patty's lack of nostalgia for the old days of sugaring stops at horses. The family still gathers sap in buckets instead of using a more modern pipeline system. Lucky for the Patties, they've got a willing and eager workforce made up of their grandsons Dylan, Colby, and Brendan, and a neighbor, Tyler. With us at our, our size, it's fun to gather, the family gathers. It's a good time out there until, until the days that you have to gather just with two, and then it's not as much fun. The boys, the young boys get all excited about it. They can't wait to get started. Of course, they can't wait to finish when we get towards the end either, but. Uh, what about the older boy? Me? I'm getting older, yeah. <laughs> no, it's fun, it's, it's, we still like it. As long as everybody sticks together, we still will keep doing it, so. The boys have built homemade rigs out in back of the sugar house. They've got a competition going to see who can make the most syrup the old-fashioned way using a kettle over an open flame. While things heat up outside, inside the sap bubbles away in the pans. Like the buckets, there's not much modernization in this sugar house. Wood, not propane, fires the evaporator, and there are no efficiency increasing devices like a reverse osmosis system or a preheater pan that are commonplace in most maple operations nowadays. This is how the patty sugar, it works for them. When we bought the new sugar rig, my son and I wanted to put a preheater pan in the back and the wife said no. If we're going to sugar, we're going to have steam in the sugar house. So that's how it stayed and that's how we've been ever since. And we've made some good syrup with it, so we're just sticking with it. It's a big expense. The RO's a lot of money and you got to have the building to store the RO in to keep it heated. And like I said, it's just a family project that we enjoy doing it and doing it this way. No need to spend that extra money to have fun. Not done. Looking good. A sugar maker is both scientist and artist. Technology boosts efficiency and increases profits, but the process of making maple syrup is only the means to an end. The product is what matters most. Mark Isselhart works as a maple specialist for University of Vermont Extension. The small operations, ones that might use buckets, are really important to the, the, the image, the marketing of maple, because a lot of times the, the story of maple is told with this older technique of collection. It's not so much the process as it is the product that's critical. Making sure high quality product across the board is what's important. Like I said, it started out good early, yeah. February. Yeah. And then after that, Garth Atherton has known slow. Bill for years. Yeah. Yeah. He's a sugar maker too and has worked as a maple equipment salesman. Right. It was Garth yeah. who yeah. emailed yeah. across the fence yeah. to tell us about his friend and the award winning syrup he and his family produce. I've been to over 30 uh, international and North American Maple Syrup Council meetings and I have, my knowledge, I've never seen one person win more than one award. The first one he won, I think it was probably a delicate, probably a light syrup, which is very delicate. Very, it had more maple flavor than maybe you would if it went through more advanced stages of today because the longer you boil or enhance that syrup, 
the more the maple flavor comes out. You know what I mean? So that's what that's what impressed me with it. You know, it's a family operation, and I, I think they do a super job. It ties the family together, and they have a wonderful job doing it. And I, I really enjoy coming up and meet, meeting with them every every year. You know, the patties have placed first twice and were awarded best in show in 2010 by the North American Maple Syrup Council, an international organization made up of 16 states in Canada. Bill's proud of the awards he and his family have won. It probably won't come as a surprise that accolades and prizes aren't why he's a sugar maker. What do you like about this time of year? Summer's coming. <laughs> no, no, it's a lot of fun. It's the last thing you do before, you know, the winter's over and it's just fun to be out there doing it, making some good syrup. We had the land, we had the maple trees, so we just, just wanted to do it for the kids. It's like Bill says, work hard, keep it clean, and enjoy. It's how the Patty family makes maple and lives life. In Enosburg Falls, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Thank you, Keith. Well, when you buy maple syrup, you have choices. Some consumers like their syrup with a light golden color that generally means a delicate maple taste. Others prefer their syrup darker with a strong maple taste. How your syrup is graded is the job of the sugar maker. UVM Extension maple specialist Mark Isselhart tells us more. There are four grades of pure maple syrup that can be sold in a retail container. They are golden color, delicate taste, amber color, rich taste, dark color, robust taste, and very dark color, strong taste. It is up to the producer or whomever's name appears on the retail container to correctly identify which grade their syrup falls. While color and flavor are the two most distinguishing characteristics of maple syrup, all syrup must meet the legal standard in four categories, color, clarity, flavor, and density. This video will cover the basics of color grading maple syrup. Assuming a sample of syrup has been properly graded and meets the minimum standards for clarity, flavor, and density, it is the color that determines the grade. There are defined ranges of color for each of the four grades of maple syrup. Color grading maple syrup essentially means placing a sample of syrup correctly into one of four ranges of color. Syrup must be as light or lighter than the low end of the color grade in which it falls, and not whichever grade it appears closest to. Being able to accurately determine syrup color and know into which grade of syrup it belongs is the job of the sugar maker. There are several factors that can impact the apparent color grade of syrup. These include syrup density, syrup temperature, syrup clarity, the device used to compare colors, light source quality, and experience of the grader. Officially, the limits are defined as a range of light transmittance values at a specified wavelength. Light transmittance is the amount of light that will pass through a given object at a given wavelength of light. The higher the number, the more light that will pass through. Golden syrup has a range from 100 to 75 percent light transmittance. Amber, 74 to 50 percent, dark, 49 to 25 percent, and very dark, less than 24 percent. Precise measurements of light transmittance can be made with either a spectrophotometer or a photometer. These devices employ a specific light source and special optics to measure the amount of light that passes through a given liquid. Spectrophotometers can measure light over a range of wavelengths, are usually found in laboratory settings, and are generally expensive. Simple and relatively inexpensive photometers that measure light transmittance at just one wavelength are being marketed directly to sugar makers. Like all precision instruments, calibration is essential if measurements are to be accurate. Make sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions if you use one of these devices to color grade maple syrup. Make sure that the syrup has been effectively filtered and that there are no air bubbles. Unfiltered or poorly filtered syrup will provide results that are inaccurate. The majority of sugar makers use a color comparator to grade their syrup. There are two types of color comparators available, temporary and permanent. 
Permanent kits have precisely tinted glass or plastic that resists fading over time. The other type of comparator is the temporary grading kit. New kits include three color standards corresponding to the legal minimum color for golden, amber, and dark syrup. No standard is included for very dark syrup since any syrup which is darker than dark robust and meets the minimum in terms of clarity, density, and flavor would be graded as very dark. So the best place to demonstrate color grading maple syrup is here in the sugar house. You've made syrup on a given day, you've done the appropriate grading for clarity and density, now it's time to check the color. There are a few things that are really important to know about using a temporary kit. Probably the, the biggest important thing to know is that it's a temporary kit. You should replace them every year or at least have them checked every year to make sure the color hasn't faded. And I have an example here of a kit that was made in 2014. And you have a golden delicate from 2017 and they're, they're quite different in color. The effect of using a glycerin standard that's faded is that it will be almost impossible to make that lightest grade of, of syrup because it is so light, it's very difficult to make syrup that, that light. The other important thing to know about these, these kits is you want to use the sample jar provided. You can see these kits all come with these small square sample jars. There are lots of small glass jars out there. Here's, here's an example of one that's, that's round. The, the problem is you'll get an in, inaccurate reading if you use the, this round jar with a, uh, comparing it to the square containers. You also want to make sure that you're in an area that has good quality light because you're going to be comparing sometimes very subtle differences in color. If you hold up the kit and you, you look through the samples, you want to look to a nice bright background and your eye should be drawn to the difference, the sample of syrup you've made that day and the standard that's closest to it. If the light is poor, um, it can be very difficult to detect very subtle differences in color. Remember, the rule says that the syrup you're grading has to be as light or lighter than the grade you're going to be calling it, not which grade it's closest to. So in, in the, this example, we have a sample of syrup that's really quite close. This sample of syrup is very close to golden delicate. However, it's a little bit darker and would have to then be called the darker, darker grade of amber rich. The other important thing to know about syrup is that it will darken over time. True maple syrup will darken over time. So if you have an example that's right on the line, you, you really think it's the lighter grade, remember that once you make it, it starts darkening. And if you have syrup in a bulk container, like a barrel or in a retail container, it will slowly darken over time and very rapidly be incorrectly graded on color. Another issue about grading maple syrup for color is that the syrup temperature can impact the color grade. So most kits are calibrated to grade color at room temperature. If your syrup is very hot, it's just come off the filter press or just come off the evaporator and has been filtered, it will have a, um, a lighter color than a colder syrup. So make sure that you are your standards and your syrup that you're grading, your sample, is all the same temperature. Another trick when you have very close calls of syrup, syrup that's very right near the line of the grade, is to hold up the kit to the light and look at it and then flip the kit around so that you're seeing the sample and the standard from both directions. This can help if the sample is just a little bit darker or just a little bit lighter than the standard. So the basics of color grading are not that complicated. You just want to make sure you're doing them all correctly. And if you have a syrup that's really close to call, uh, have someone else try and have a look and get a second opinion. More information on this and other issues related to production of pure maple syrup can be found at the University of Vermont Extension Maple page. On behalf of UVM Extension Maple Program, I'm Mark Esselhart. Time for some Vermont Maple. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.